Melrose up against Jed Forrest. Jed Forrest winners back in 2016. Melrose were the last side to lose a final here back in 2019 to Watsonians. But they've a, a fine record winning every tie, every final I should say, between 2010 and 2015. And winners again in 2018. So a proud record, of course, making the relatively short journey from the Green Yards down as Jed Forrest then powerful running here up towards the edge of the, the 22 and Rory Marshall leading to the front there as Jed Forrest side who were looking quite wearisome at the end of their quarter final tie working it out on this right hand side they want a, a bright start the ball in the hands of Finlay Scott but the referee just intervening with that infringement Selkirk can take a breather watch on with interest and see which of their border neighbours they'll take on in the 90th Erlston Sevens final coming up in a short while Melrose in possession just at the moment and once again looking to work the ball up towards the edge of their own 22 comfortable through the hands Bruce Colvin watching on he's going to be a, an important character you would imagine this afternoon just di dictating play Struan Hutchison has also been a, a vocal presence on the field but uh, Jed Forrest perhaps just running a few one-to-one -one battles in the opening stages and uh, well, Gary Munro is a, a very distinctive figure in the sevens this afternoon after sustaining a head knock with that strapping just around the ears guys what have you made of the, the start these sides have made? Well, I think Jed will be pretty pleased with the start they've made. Um, as you mentioned, they looked a wee bit laggy possibly in their last game, but there goes Lewis Young, and Lewis Young, my word, what a try. When Lewis drops that shoulder, he just almost knows he's going to break the line when he does it, and he, he was gone there. Uh, there was there was no one getting him there, and it, uh, it was a great individual try by Lewis uh, Lewis Young. Tremendous try, and I would agree, Jed, Jed's made a good start to this game. You know, they've hustled well, Rory Marshall with a clean line break, so uh, Lewis picking up seven points, so good start for Jed. Underneath the post, very experienced squad of players, as we mentioned in past sevens. And of course, a side that maybe did look a little bit leggy in the, the quarter finals, they're wanting a bright start because they know it, you know, it can be a, a long 14 minutes if you lose the first points. Well, what's really showed how to beat Jed really by keeping the ball for longer periods of time and making them work harder. Melrose coughed the ball up there with an unforced error, and uh, they're seven points down off the back of it. Monroe's restart kick will be contested. Ball is allowed to bounce and Melrose looking to strip. Colvin goes in and then backs off. Jed have it once more. Munro then up towards the 22, bypasses Colvin, goes to ground. Recycle ball very quickly in there was Gregor Young. Out towards the, the left hand side, fine piece of running here. Could well be up towards the edge of the five metre line once more. Just going to deck. Reinforcements coming in, Munro once more, but the penalty awarded as Jed unable to release. Stuart Hutchison and Melrose will want oh, to. That was a take silly, the silly card. yellow there. It's not, not like Finn Scott, that it was yellow card for Finn Scott. So, Jed up against it, but they have points on the board early. Pace to burn there, Melrose once more. Don Crawford up towards halfway. Snatched and close towards the, the touchline here. Kowski out towards Colvin. Colvin is central. Now is he going to back himself from halfway? Offloads there and that's a fine run. Knocks on though. Jed will do well to ride out this man advantage that Melrose have and chance gone possibly there for Melrose. Are Jed arguably the best side at operating a mobile sweeper? Yes, I think Gary Munro, he typifies everything you want from that and he, he, you know, yesterday in the final he made an absolute wallop and try saving tackle right in the last play of the final and yeah, I would say he's the best at it at the moment. Nice little offload there and Jed again trying to make some ground. Gregor Young goes to deck, he's been stripped, Melrose have it once more, having to build from their own 22 but a man advantage as they again trying to eat up some ground here at great acceleration now from Melrose, from Crawford, Donald Crawford then is going to be in underneath the posts and that should make it a much simpler conversion if successful it levels the tie and there's the damage being done with Jed down a man, Melrose are able to hit back in that two minute window and they'll look to level it with this conversion. Yeah, Donald Crawford's had a fine season in the 15s where he showed an abundance of pace. I'm sure he's a player that's picked up a yard or two this season and he, he left the Jed defence for 
for Dad there and he, you feel he's going to be integral if Melrose are going to proceed to the final yeah Donald's got an outside arc on him an outside run and he does that 13 well in the 15s and you can see he knows when it's on and he always accelerates through the gap he's probably one of the quickest over the first 10 uh, and that's what you need to get through the gap really good try by Donald Crawford Two very streetwise groups of players involved in this second semi-final. Selkirk awaiting the winners. Hutchison then with the restart. Closing in on half-time. Hutchison's kick. Maybe a little bit too inviting there for Jed Forrest and Gregor Young, but he had to challenge and did well. Marshall is over the ball as well, just securing possession for Jed Forrest. Recycled there by Finlay Scott. Jed back to a full complement of players offload again, Young picks up just on that left hand side, wrapped in the tackle there by James Brown just on the 10 Jed recycle once more, Scott has it again, working it out towards Buckley on this right hand side Buckley weighs up the options, finds a gap, off he goes now, up towards halfway, and he's got pace on that left hand side, and Gregor Young is not going to be caught, he's underneath the posts a fine piece of play there again Jed building patient play, Buckley he broke the line on the 10, that was crucial because Young followed him and then you felt there was only going to be one outcome Yeah, there was only going to be one outcome, I think Dom, once Dom Buckley made the, the first break, he, Dom knows he's not going to have the pace, but he's just looking for that man on the inside Gregor Young as ever, he was there and Dom just executed the pass, bang on Yeah, great support play and great play by Dom Buckley, you know that's the thing about this Jed squad, there are just no passengers there's nobody getting carried 1-12 to 12. this is a serious 7 squad as Gary Monroe starts the second half. Young underneath it once again. So too though, the Melrose number three lose Marlin. Solid challenge there on Marshall. Picked up by Young on towards Buckley. Floated pass out. Monroe then cuts in from his sweeper roll. Is tackled by the Melrose number two, Bruce Colvin. Jed infringing the shot of that. Melrose 22. So Melrose having to chase the game at the moment. Strune Hutchison looking to go on a, a bit of a mazy run up towards the halfway line. Offload was important there just to break halfway. Recycle ball from Hutchison. Colvin with the touch. Melrose again working it down this right hand side. Prodded forward. Marshall is back. Was able to at least face the oncoming traffic when he gathered the ball. Recycled. Buckley again. Sucks round the ankles. The two youngs seen it all, done it all. Lewis again just weighing up what was in front of him before he goes to deck. Penalty awarded though to Melrose, so Melrose drawing in the penalty. Colvin, understandably, very quick to get on with play here. Once more, Lewis Marlin tried to work his way towards the corner. Very close to try. Marlin then recycles ball, flies over heads there. Colvin again looking to recycle himself. Now Melrose driving towards the line and that's a fine score at the start of the second half and it's Donald Crawford again and he's got the bit between his teeth. He's the Melrose sniper in this semi-final and it keeps this tie very interesting because a try underneath the post once more converted levels at the 14 all. Jed's traditionally always well supported here at the Ellison tournament and you know Melrose it goes without saying well supported here as well so yeah as the, as the day wears on and the crowd starts to get a wee bit more vociferous these two aye, these two teams are two of the more well supported outfits it's a, a little bit cooler than it was earlier on but a very pleasant afternoon for Seven Rugby approaching then the closing stages of the second semi-final Selkirk awaiting the winners could we have extra period of the semi-final to decide the outcome of these two teams locking horns Melrose and Jed Forrest, 14 points all. It's, it's been a, a, a more cohesive game, far fewer penalties in this game than in the first of the semis. No, I think this ties with up a little gear in, in quality. For me, uh, both teams are, are, are playing well. Uh, maybe slightly more individual than Melrose team, but and the Jed team working as a complete unit, but it's a tight one. Of course, these sides met in the 2006 final, with Jed winning that one to collect the, the silverware there. That looked like a a handling error inside the, the Jed 22. The referee is going to whistle and now signal the knock on. So Melrose with good field position, but again they'll perhaps be looking at the likes of Crawford to finish off a move yeah. here. Yeah, Crawford could be key and young Archie Pilchers on the park now as well. He's got serious pace and Melrose have used him fairly sparingly in the last couple of days, so he'll be fresh as well. Melrose then with the scrummage 
Jed acutely Ooh, aware of the important Jed have managed to win it against the head Marshall the offload there towards Young and Young almost goes to deck Lewis Young Marshall just underneath the post Monroe bypasses two out towards that right hand side offload now and some acceleration shown here by Scott he's tackled though on that ten reinforcements coming in Monroe has it again long loop pass out now towards Marshall Marshall then straightens up takes the ball into contact that's a solid challenge there well handling error though frustration on the face of the hugely experienced Dan Gillespie back involved in the, the Jed Forest Sevens and uh, well he's, he's another one that's been there done it seen it and uh, he certainly mm. knows how to uh, perhaps uh, use some streetwise tactics to good effect for the side he's playing for Ben Weir in what I think is probably his first senior tournament for Melrose packing down there against Gillespie yeah, Darren's certainly going for him here Melrose then with the feet look at the power there of Gillespie and Jed and it comes back towards Marshall so Jed certainly winning back possession doing the, the first bit Melrose will need to strip it back Finley Scott up towards the 10 now Lewis Young has it once more can he find his twin brother he needs to offload towards Gregory Young he picks a fine angle slows up but the referee had again spotted the infringement the handling just letting them down with the passage of play in the pass on the edge of the 22 and that was a real opportunity for Jed there to score at a vital stage in this second semi-final level at 14 points all Melrose then building from their own five Pilcher picks up inside the 22 up against Lewis Young round the corner over the 10 over halfway Gregory Young is chasing him all the way but Pilcher's going to be in in the corner and Gregory Young can't stop him and that try could well win the tie fine piece of play from the youngster down the left hand side and my word he may well have won it right at the death yeah, what a clean pair of heels there from Archie Pulcher. Crawford maybe done the first two tries with a run, but he gives them it early and he takes off like a rocket. What a try to win it. Yeah, we mentioned we mentioned him. Melrose have used him reasonably sparingly over the course of the last two tournaments, but what a clean pair of heels he showed down that far side to, you know, to burn Lewis Young, no less. So it's Pulcher's try down that left-hand side securing the win for Melrose it will be a repeat of the final then in 2010 when Melrose faced Selkirk Jed Forrest a case of what might have been but the youngster coming good and that's one of the finest tries we'll have seen all weekend yeah that's been one of the be best ones it was a full length full length try from Pelcher. He just, he just took off backed himself and uh, great to see a youngster back himself against an experienced Jed side and he's going to reap the rewards now and it certainly will build confidence for him and for the team as a collective it's Melrose against Selkirk the tie which uh, will conclude the 90th playing of the Erlston Sevens it will be the final of the 90th playing of the Erlston Sevens and Melrose will take on Selkirk in 20 minutes time